Well, welcome everybody. Happy Wednesday to you. Thanks for joining us for Curious Online. My name is Jill Sullivan and I'm the director of our student ministry. And I'm joined by Reed Epps over here on this end who works with our junior high kiddos. We have Maddie right here who works with sixth grade. We have Tyler who is our high school pastor and Missy who is over our Curious small groups. So if you have been tracking with us up until this point on Wednesday nights, you have been doing our family-oriented Curious Online, which was a blast. We loved it. But as of now, as we hit summer, we're going to switch gears a little bit for these Curious Onlines. And these intros on FaithBridge Live are going to be designed for our Curious Leaders. Special welcome to you, Curious Leaders, as well as our students who are two tuning into their curious groups. So welcome to you guys. And we also have our newest class of sixth graders who have just been promoted from fifth grade. Welcome to y'all. We are so pumped that you are a part of our student ministry now. So welcome to everybody. We are glad that you are here. So our vision for why we're doing a curious summer study, this is the first time that we have ever done one of these. So it begs the question, well, why are we? And we can say pretty confidently, and you guys can say pretty confidently, we find ourselves in quite a unique season and a unique summer for that matter, because a lot of summer camps are saying, you know what, we actually can't receive campers that would not be healthy for us or safe for anyone involved. The road is doing at home virtual journeys. So that is going to look different. Summer vacations look different and we will be at home more than normal. So we wanted to provide students, you guys, with a chance for something to remain constant. When everything else is changing, we wanted a place where you know you can come every week and you get to process what's going on. The longer this goes, we will have more things to process. And we wanted a place where you can continue to be invested in and have a safe community. We need people around us and we need truth in this season. So that's the vision. Now let me tell you, we are so excited, we keep saying this, the series that we are going to be walking through for this summer study is called Follow Me, A Look at Those Who Did. And that means what we're gonna do is we are going to go back to the time of Jesus. And what we're gonna do is look at when Jesus said, follow me to the people that he asked that, what did he mean? when he asked it? What did it look like for the people in that day? And we actually are going to even take a look at five different people, take a deep dive into five different people. And then toward the end of the series, we are going to give you a chance to figure out who of those five people, who do you relate with the most? So we are so, we're so excited because I think that um, throughout time, culture has shifted the idea of what follow me or follow Jesus means. It looks different today in 2020 than it did. So what we wanna do is reconcile those two together and make it look more of the same than different. So the format is going to be, we're going to start here on FaithBridge Live every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And we're gonna be doing an intro for our curious groups for the night. And you guys are going to get to join us in a kind of roundtable discussion that we're gonna have, teeing up whatever the topic is for the evening. And then after this intro, curious groups are going to break into their Zoom calls where they are divided by grade and by gender. And they're going to go even deeper with some dis discussion questions that we're gonna provide for them. But we're gonna start with our own questions up here. So the first one we have is, as we do think about the, um, the ask that Jesus made of follow me, and when he would have approached these people, we want to talk about who was Jesus? Or when he did approach people to make this request, what would people have known about this man who is now standing with them face to face? So I'll open it up to you guys. I think to really know who Jesus is, you have to look a lot farther back than even when he was just here physically in the flesh on earth. Like, and, and one of the biggest questions that I know I'll get is, 
were the people expecting him? Like, did they know he was coming or did this guy just pop up and say, hey, I'm the son of God? Um, and, and yes, they knew that the Messiah was coming or the Savior was coming. They didn't expect him to look how he did. And that's just not necessarily his physical appearance, but just his whole mission. You look way back at the prophet Isaiah in the, who wrote the book of Isaiah and God gives him this message to tell people that a Messiah is coming. And as a part of that message, there's a, a verse that comes from that, that we quote a lot around Christmas time, for unto us a child is born. But it goes on to say that the government will stand upon his shoulders. And people in those times were eagerly waiting on a Messiah for a, a large reason being that piece right there. They were waiting for a political savior to come and to save them from Roman rule. And so all of a sudden the Messiah comes and then they find out he's going to offer them so much more than that. And it really flips everything upside down. It even magnifies it. And it's such a cool thing to look at because it's still very relevant to us today even though we're looking at when Jesus was in the flesh during his earthly ministry, when he started to say, hey, follow me, um, we're gonna see how that statement is still very relevant to us today. Um, and it's, it's super important to look at. Yeah, and I think something else we need to continue to remember is that Jesus was 100% human. When he showed up and said, follow me, there wasn't any big sign over his head saying, I am, like, I'm Jesus, the son of God. He was just a a 30-year-old guy from Nazareth that showed up and said, follow me. They might have known that he was teaching some things, um, but that's about it. And so when he showed up, that was kind of their whole context. It wasn't until later that they re like fully realized that he was the Messiah who they had been hoping for and also looked completely, completely different. I think too, though, he's got so much confidence. I mean, he's 100% man, 100% God. And so he's confident everywhere he's going, like people are seeing this man who's just come onto the scene, who's confident in whatever he has to say, whatever he has to do. And he's also loving. He, he loves us even if we, you know, there's people who said no to Jesus. And he said, that's okay because he wants to give us that choice, but he also pursues us at the same time. So I just love that about God and about Jesus coming here on earth, how he's 100% man, 100% God, and he's confident in all he has to do through the Bible and through the gospels. So it's just yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I like thinking about that too. Yeah. Kind of mind-blowing, 100% man, 100% God. For sure. So the next thing that I have been thinking about, and I wanna hear y'all's thoughts on, um, when Jesus did walk up to someone and say, follow me. It meant something different than just, hey, are you willing to receive my, quote, email updates on how my ministry is going? Or, hey, will you like my Facebook page so that you can see the things that I post? Or Instagram, will you like everything that I post? Whatever. It was very, very different. Follow me meant meant a lot of deeper implications when Jesus would have asked that to people. So let's talk about that for a minute. What are some of the deeper, um, deeper meanings of follow me when Jesus asked? I'm like you, Jill. I think about like, follow me. He wasn't saying like, hey, go home, pack a bag, you know, tell your family. And, you know, I mean, it was like, hey, follow me, like drop everything mm -hmm. and let's go. I mean, and it's not like we're going to be staying in nice hotels and it's going to be great. You're, you're going from town to town. We're going to get dust on our feet. I mean, follow me, mm -hmm. like give up everything and follow me, which is mind blowing. Like you mm -hmm. said earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's such an important question to think about too, because even though we're reading it in scripture from when he was here and walking the earth and going up to people and saying, Hey, follow me. What does that mean? When we think about what does it mean when he says, follow me, it's important to think about because he is still doing that. Like, even though he's not standing in the physical flesh in front of us and saying, Hey, follow me. The gospel is all about that statement. It, it, and he goes on later to say, whoever loses their life will find it. Like he's in that moment. Um, when, when you believe that Christ is who he says he is, there is now a response and that response is follow me and it's give up your own plan and it's putting all of it aside. That, that may mean, you know, if I'm an incredibly talented athlete and I have my whole plan, you know, it, it's in the works and all this stuff. If from the moment that he says, follow me and I accept that, that means I'm willing to say, you know what? 
I am starting from scratch. It is all yours. If this is the path you want me to pursue, then it is. If you have something totally different, then it is. It's a willingness to, to give up everything um, and let him be Lord of your life because that's a big, big part of following Christ that sometimes we can forget especially just like the pride that they had in having a job that they were trained in or that they grew up and this is what I'm doing. And then God saying, follow me. And I just think back now, thinking now we, we love to have our jobs, but, but your job was like the thing that you were proud of, the thing that you told people about, this is what I do. And now people are asking, what do you do? Oh, I follow a man named Jesus and how much that must take to swallow and say, yeah, I follow a man named Jesus. So the, the pride that you have to swallow in that. So, And I think the crazy thing is you were just starting to hit on this. And I think you did too, Missy. Jesus meant like right now. Are you willing to starting right now come with me and literally start walking with me to wherever we're going next? And I think that's the thing that's mind blowing to me. I would be trying to answer all sorts of questions like, well, what is tomorrow going to look like? Do I need to bring things with me? I, I would be filled with more questions instead of saying, yep, I'm ready. Let's do it. So as we do think about, okay, say that you guys, say tonight, Jesus showed up into our home, our living room and said, Jill, follow me or Tyler, follow me, or Missy, follow me. What would, what would your response be? Like honest response. How would you guys, um, how would you guys respond? Oh, that's tough. Um, except I feel like I've been there, honestly. I feel like there is a point in my life where I got to the point where I couldn't do it anymore. And it was just, okay, I'm, you know, I'm gonna surrender everything to you. Now I'm gonna follow you. But I had to figure that out, like myself, like I can't do all of it. Okay, Jesus, I'm gonna follow you. And once I started doing that, um, I think of the verse that says, um, he'll give you the desires of your heart. And I remember thinking, oh, well, the desires of my heart is this and this and this. But once I started, you know, digging into scripture and started living and, and volunteering and, and coming to church and, um, talking about Jesus and studying him, I realized that the desires of my heart were more his desires. The desires of my heart had gone away and it was more of a desire to be like him and to follow him and to live and carry each other's burdens. Um, so I feel like I've, I've done that. Now, are there days when I'm like, oh no, I got this and I have to stop and go, okay, wait a minute, I'm, I'm following Jesus. Yes, but... As soon as I did, I mean, it was just, it was a whole new thing. I mean, I had some friends that I had to let go of and say, you know, um, and that was tough. And there were some people that were like, wait a minute, you know. And so it was one of those things where it's like, hey, I'm changed. I'm following Christ. I'm following Jesus. And in in return, there's been joy and peace. And yeah, there's been some, some tough, some tough times, but yeah, I'm following Jesus. So, yeah, I love that. Well, so we are starting to kind of um, begin the conversation of the overview of what it looks like for us to follow Jesus. You guys are going to get to do that more within your groups tonight in just a little bit. But I have one more question I want us to answer because I think it will stir up excitement for you guys. Um, We have gotten to talk through some of the people who we are going to study, those five people that I mentioned. So let me hear from a couple of y'all. Who are you excited about studying since we've gotten to spend time in this? Well, I'm super excited to dive into uh, looking at Peter. I'm really excited to look at Peter because he is someone that I think we've all heard about. And we've heard a couple stories of him walking on water or, you know, we learned that probably growing up. But there's so much more to him um, and there's so much to learn from him in both his incredible moments of faith and also his incredible moments of disbelief. Um, and all those things. So I'm excited to dive further into that and see what we can learn from his decision to follow Christ. 
I think I, I don't want to get ahead of the train, but I'm excited for Thomas. I, I was talking to Tyler before this, and he was talking about how much there is about Thomas that we may not know or that he's been able to know, and now we've been able to share with each other about Thomas. And so I think it's going to be great. And especially Thomas is the one who doubted that Jesus had risen. Um, Jesus had risen from the grave, and so Thomas um, can sometimes be us who doubt, um, and we can learn from that. And so I'm excited for Thomas. Yeah, I think um, I, I'll say as well, when it comes, I'm, I'm definitely excited to dig into Mary Magdalene. I think there's something uh, to say about being the first person that Jesus reveals himself to when he did rise and, and resurrect from the dead. Um, and also just, I, I got to look into Thomas and I will say that was my first time to look into Thomas. Like I'll be vulnerable in that. I didn't know much about Thomas at all. Um, and that's why I'm so excited for this study in general we even as a team have avoided using the word character in the Bible and have used the word like person in the Bible because I sometimes so much forget like these were actual people who followed Christ. Um, And so I'm just, I'm excited for all of them. That's my cop-out answer. Um, (laughs) But I've really loved digging into these people because there's so many nuggets that you find about these people that you didn't know or miss, uh, you know, misperception about them or things like that. So uh, Mary Magdalene and Thomas are the two big ones, but all of the above, definitely. I like it. Well, we are excited and we hope that you are too. So at this point, groups, we are finished with our intro. And from here, you guys can hop onto your Zoom calls and go into your discussion. There are some great questions for you to start to engage within your group and answer those for yourselves. So we will see you next Wednesday night back here for your curious intro. Have a great night.